the Army. He moved to Louisville in 1999. He's worked in the financial industry, worked at National Asset Management, and started Integrity Asset Management and served as its CEO. His family business, Bell & Brothers Manufacturing, in East Hampton, Connecticut, has been making bells for 181 years. These are the bells that you hear when the Salvation Army rings bells on Christmas. He's a partner and advisor at Waycross Investment Management in Louisville. He's been working on humanitarian projects in India and Africa, and he's chaired the board of the Louisville Area Chamber of the American Red Cross. He's announced his candidacy for the Republican nomination for the U.S. Senate, Matt Bevan. Thank you for having me here. Fancy Farm, what an amazing tradition this is. I'm going to ask my family, actually, to come, come on up here. Now that Mitch McConnell has made room for us by leaving, we have a little more room here on the stage. Come on up, guys. Let me tell you something. I know this is a good time. I know this is fun. I know it's rowdy, and I know there's a lot of good food. And I thank the people of St. Jerome's Parish for putting this on because this is an extraordinary piece of American history right here. But the fact of the matter is, at the end of the day, we are here because we do live in the land of the free, and we do live in the home of the brave, and that means something. And it's great to play games, and it's great to boo, and it's great to take snarky comments about the other people. I, I did find it interesting that Jack Conway was talking about people in fancy clothes. You know, you sh anyhow, I'll stop there. The fact is, the fact is, there is a lot more at stake on this stage and in this Senate race than meets the eye. It's more than just the noise. Mitch McConnell has amazingly disappeared. I, I find that shocking. It's like a 30-year flashback. Instead of where's D, instead of where's D, it's where's Mitch? Maybe we can call him back. Where's Mitch? Where's Mitch? Where's Mitch? You know, the people of Kentucky have been wondering that for quite a while now. On both sides of the aisle, I'll have you know. And I'll tell you, Mitch McConnell spoke in Louisville earlier this year, and he told people he likes to brag about how Kentucky is a place where people come to end their lives. That was his exact quote. I, I'm running for U.S. Senate because I'm living proof of, and I want people to know that Kentucky is a place for people to begin their lives, to expand their lives, and to improve their lives. You can cheer for this, too. It's okay. You want a better life? We're on the same team here, I'll tell you that much. It's easy to get up here and take cracks at Allison Lundgren Grimes, and I'm not gonna do that, because she and I will have ample opportunity next year on this stage, when this guy's gone, to do exactly that. And frankly, with the start to her campaign, I mean, I, don't, I didn't have anything left after that. So, the fact is, there will be time for that next year. The bells, the bells that have been ringing, Mitch McConnell seemed to wonder what was up with that. I saw him kind of looking around. And let me tell you something, Senator, if you haven't scurried away yet, ask not for whom the bells toll, Senator. They toll for you. They toll for you. They toll for you because the people of Kentucky have had enough. They told for you because the people of Kentucky have had enough of the amnesty, they've had enough of the bailouts, they've had enough of Wall Street banks being bailed out while small Kentucky businesses and farms got nothing. They've had enough. They've had enough of you raising your own pay time and time again while people here in the Commonwealth are struggling. They've had enough of that. The people of Kentucky have had enough of you fighting desperately to keep your job while doing nothing to help keep jobs in Kentucky with 5,700 jobs in the coal towns alone gone in the last two years. It's unacceptable. We've had enough. 
And I, I find it interesting, why are you leaving already and with all of your supporters? Apparently the bus wants to beat the crowds. But the fact of the matter is, Mitch McConnell doesn't want people to actually hear that they have an alternative. We hear a lot of empty rhetoric from Mitch McConnell about ending Obamacare. Obamacare is unpopular. Stop talking about yanking it out root and branch and start voting in the U.S. Senate to kill it by defunding it. Stand with Senator Mike Lee. Be a man, stand up, and put your money where your mouth is. The people of Kentucky deserve better. Mitch McConnell is known as mudslinging Mitch because the only thing he has to run on is destroying other people. There is nothing in his 30-year history of voting that he's proud enough of to actually run on. He talks about the money he has. He brags about his war chest. Well, I'll tell you this. Mitch McConnell, or Addison Mitchell McConnell II, as he might be known, there was another guy that had a war chest. His name was King George William Frederick III. In 1776, he had a war chest, and the people sent him packing, and we're going to send you packing. I don't intend to run to the right of Mitch McConnell. I don't intend to run to the left of Mitch McConnell. I intend to run straight over the top of Mitch McConnell and right into the U.S. Senate, and with your help, we're going to do that. Thank you, God bless you, and God bless the United States of America. Our next speaker grew up in Owensboro, Kentucky, a fourth-generation Kentuckian. He's a graduate of Apollo High School.